There we go. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome. We've got a good topic for you this afternoon. Chris Caputo's in the the captain's chair for us today, <laughs> and I just get to ask him a lot of questions. So, welcome, 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 guys. All right, Chris, who are you, and what are we going to do? Yeah, thanks, Marlene. And if everyone makes sure you set your uh, your volume, Zoom can always be a little bit tricky as far as uh, noise interruptions and all that. And we love people talking when it's on mute. So you're interacting and engaged, it's awesome. So yeah, welcome everybody. My name is Chris Caputo. I am one of the co-founders of an organization called Hesed Discipleship Network. And there are three of us. One of them is my wife, Rebecca Jo Caputo, who is actually on the call here, is traveling today. Uh, otherwise she'd be on the screen with us. And she was where Mercy is as the former, um, helper for all things life model work. So this is kind of a homecoming for us in such a good way. And Marlene, thank you so much. I want to say thank you to you and to the life model works team for uh, us doing this collaboration today. We're going to, we're going to talk about a couple of subjects today. Of course, the big hairy audacious goal of this is to talk about healing church hurt, the name of this uh, presentation for all in 2024. And that's where we're going to begin. And um, so there, and I, well, I will, I'll, also, as we're going through the presentation, if you don't mind, if you have comments or questions, because we're going to take pauses in between to kind of quiet for a minute, take in what we've heard, and then do some debriefing and processing. Mercy will be able to collate some of those, so I won't be able to see any of them. Neither will Marlene. We're going to do our thing. So that would be great if uh, you all want to engage in this. We'd love to have your feedback on this. And then um, we're going to take a few of those pauses to do that. And basically, there's three there's three things that we're going to talk about today. Then I'm going to show up a slide, and then I'll turn it over to Marlene so we can get our conversation going. And we just want to see this as a living room kind of thing. We want this to be very organic in a sense, though very intentional. That's how we roll at Hesed. We do things very practically, organically, but also there's a lot of intentionality behind it. Another thing too, I want to mention. I wanted we wanted to gear this presentation towards leaders. It, but however, the, the content I'm going to share with you is actually designed not specifically primarily for leaders, though secondarily it is. It's basically for people who are are on the margins in the body of Christ who may have even left church or have had experiences where they've been wounded for many years just because of whatever. It's not because we're going to be very honoring of leaders today. At least I am. I am a pastor. I am someone that is uh, a leader uh, serving people pastorally and helping with networks and movements. So I have a real tender soft spot for leaders in the body of Christ who are out there day in, day out and sacrifice a whole bunch and put themselves on the line. They put their families out there on the altar of sacrifice at times. And it is a job that is uh, probably yeah. the toughest in the world, especially in a COVID and post COVID envi environment we're in right now. So we always want to be very tender as we present this, this topic today. So that's where I'm coming from. So you know a little bit about me. Um, so I'm just going to throw up a slide, Marlene, and you and I will get rolling down the road here just okay. so we have a focus of what today's presentation is about. So I'm going to use okay. a little share screen. There you go. All right. So the name of, let me make sure I'm in alignment here. Okay. All right. So here's our focus for today. We're going to talk about three core challenges hindering leaders and believers. We're also going to go over seven dynamics of an emotionally healthy church community culture. And then we're going to offer as a helpful solution for leaders specifically is one substantial shift to bring maximum effect based on those seven dynamics. All right. So I'm going to stop share. All right, Marlene, it's you and I. We're going to have our, yeah. our little coffee. It's coffee and tea time together. All right. Well, about some some joyful things, some tough mm -hmm. things, and just kind of like uh, lay the foundation. So, um, Marlene, why don't we why don't we jump in? We're going to talk a little bit about some of the devastating impacts yeah. COVID has had on our pastors, our leaders, uh, yeah. those who are dearly love. How churches are closing, uh, how leaders are yeah. becoming more overwhelmed with the task at hand, and how church hurt could happen. You know, whether mm -hmm. not intentionally for the most part. So, right. why don't you take yeah. it away, my friend? I'm going to interview you for a little bit, and then we'll go from there. Well, I'm I'm just so excited that this is the conversation because it's for this relational network, we have something that we get to pay attention to and need to be paying attention to. But I love it because of the fact that all the tools that we have 
play right into the solution for church hurt. And so it's it's another one of the, it's a hot topic, especially among young people. They are realizing they didn't know what was missing, didn't know what was wrong. And now they're coming alive. As soon as somebody even mentions it, they said, oh, that's it. So I'm glad that we're entering into the, to the conversation for sure. And you're just the man to lead the charge on this one. <laughs> well, here's the thing, just a little bit about me. I have been a huge fan of this ministry for a very long time. Uh, I say very long time. That's a relative phrase. Uh, since 2007 is when I what, what, when I met what I call the green book, the life uh -huh. model, living from the heart Jesus gave you. So that is when it's all like, when did you meet life model book for the first time? That's all seems to be a reference point for a lot of us if you're on yes. this call. Yes. And that was a real earth changer for me in many ways. It, 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 and a lot of the quote missing pieces started coming together for me. Um, so, yeah. So, so basically, uh, Marlene, what you and I are going to touch on a little bit, let's talk a little bit about church. Hurt. Let's just, let's just address the elephant for a yeah. little bit here. Yeah. Um, and it can be believers who can hurt leaders and leaders who can hurt believers. It just, this works yes. both ways. So do you want yes. to kick in a little bit with some of your well, I, I, insights you know on church hurt? Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to start a little bit because after being 16 years in the mission field, and pretty much serving a fairly conservative missionary community, but also even before then, just I just stopped stopped to take notice of how and I'm sorry guys, but how dogmatic as parents, mm. can, how dogmatic parents can be, and what that has done to kids. And I've because I've ministered a lot to those young people, and now see too many of them who are no longer at the at the church i still remember even one of my kids deciding she didn't want to go to church anymore and i had church in my house and uh just remembering some of the people who were like if she was my daughter she'd have to come downstairs and say oh well, i'm glad she's my daughter <laughs> but uh just the dogmatic things that we've held on to that has caused hurt that was unnecessary it's almost like the relationship was not as important as the as the issue. The issue was most important. This is the line, let's tell the line. And so I see a lot of that and I've seen a lot of that from the young people that I've had a chance to minister to and even still in contact with their lives. Yeah. And you were mentioning also cross-generationally, -genera we were on the phone earlier in the green room discussing how we're, we're losing ground, correct? With generations of perpetual church or where the younger people are just not coming anymore. They're not showing of, up. Of course. And I think if, if for those of you on the call, if you're not familiar with, there's a, the Duns are, they're actually called that. These are people who are done. They're done with church, but they're not done with God. Mm -hmm. And so if they're not done with God, that gives us an avenue still into their hearts. And even the ones who are done with God, I think there are still some recovery, some recuperation, some um, some recapturing of hearts there. But, and then of course, they're the nuns. They just don't want anything to do with it at all. But I think when this whole conversation of church hurt, it it will, the nuns can be a big, big um, focus group for us. It's like, no, this isn't what, how God has designed for our families to end up. And so let's go and, re and recapture these hearts and, and speak into the hearts. You know, one of the things for Life Model Works is that we, our focus is want, we want to turn the ship a little bit towards younger hearts. And mm -hmm. if to, for us to do that, we have to enter into this conversation about church hurt because it is the elephant in the room. And what do we want to do about that? And you mentioned, it's really good, about how uh, there may have been religion. You talked about leaders putting putting rules and structures. It's a, a form of trauma in a sense. And Life Model taught us all about the two types of trauma. Trauma A, the absence of good things that we need and did not get through a family context. And on top of that, we have trauma B, the bad things that happen that shouldn't have that reduce our capacity mm -hmm. to live fully alive from the heart Jesus gave us. Right. So you're addressing some of those trauma B issues where thank God we have so many resources out there that Jesus Himself is the only one who can heal that. Yeah. We have to we have to get into a man the presence of Emmanuel. We have to hear truth. We have to hear his heart, his perspective. Because really, when it comes about healing trauma B, it's actually the completion of the memory because we can't find Jesus yet. So the story is incomplete. Yeah. That's yeah. really how trauma B. And then when we're on our own, we get into a toxic place because we're on our own to fill in the narrative, but there could be other voices. That can also fill in that narrative that may not be the Lord. And that yes. creates a problem. So thank God for Carl Lehman, Jim Wilder. Yes. They're able to lay tracks of foundation. We have many ministries I want to honor. Shout out to Alive and Well, 
uh, uh, Journey Groups, Amy Brown, yes. Thrive Today, Chris DeCourcy, Deeper Walk, yeah. Deeper walk. Um, these, these, you know, we have so many wonderful resources where it's just really, the Lord does a lot of the heavy lifting on trauma yeah. being, actually does all of it. And there's nothing we can do. We can't heal anybody. He heals people, right? So yes. but then there's that little thing of partnership with trauma A, where there's the absence yes. of good things that we did not receive in family that we need to heal through secure attachments. We need to heal through, and it could take years. It could take a, an extended process to do that. So, but today we're not here to talk mm -hmm. about, we're not here to do a life model clinic on trauma yeah. A and B. <laughs> However, it does tie in and lays a foundational context to our conversation today, because when we talk about healing church hurt in 2024 for leaders and pastors includes mostly trauma A healing is what we're going to talk about today and how to do that with the ruptures yes. that we experience, but also what are some patterns, some rhythms and some solutions that we can step into to at least move the arrow a little bit more towards emotional health, a little bit towards that, because it's the good things that we need that our gardens of our hearts are, are lacking and craving and crying out for that are not being fulfilled in a spiritual mm -hmm. family context. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's natural families that can, can bring a lot of destruction, but it's this family of God that actually in partnership with Jesus that heals that. And we yes. all know. That. So Marlene, what are you thinking as we're, we're I'm thinking of this, I've, I'm just realizing the more and more I get into this, the research of this topic, you know, the other part that I remember reading about is that the number of young people who say they're, they're leaving the church because they want the relationship. They want the connection and the church wasn't providing that for them. And I'm thinking, what, what is wrong with this picture? And so that is another, you know, another thing that this is why we get to speak into this situation because we get to, 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 and, and, um, include leaders into, and uh, I guess just showing leaders, hey guys, here's a better way. And, um, and that's all a part of alleviating this church hurt. And I yeah. really think too, I, we are at Hesed Discipleship Network. We are a huge proponent of John 13, 34 and 35. It's, he, mm -hmm. he actually says a new commandment I give to you to love one another. Mm -hmm. as, as you love one another, everyone will know, meaning the world will know, meaning those kids yeah. who are living in here, in this world here, yeah. that they will know we are Jesus's disciples based on how we treat one another. And if we yes. treat one another in a way that is uh, less than the standard of John 13, 34 and 35, you know what they're going to do? They're going to vote with their feet and step back. They're going to go, I want no part of that. Yeah. yeah. That's not okay. So um, that's not an indictment on anyone on this call or any leaders necessarily, but it is no. a systemic focus that we are losing ground, friends, because there is not a demonst demonstration, a tangible demonstrative uh, file. <laughs> and I don't say the all churches because there's a lot of great churches out there and, I, and there are a lot of wonderful pastors and leaders and all of you are amazing. I don't know you, but you're here and you're hungry and you're going after it. I love you already because you're going after this topic. So yeah. number one, you're, 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 you're all right by my book. But there is a systemic thing, and that's what this training is going to be about, is to ask good questions about systems and structures. Mm -hmm. And what is the fruit that's coming on the other end of that that's actually hurting leaders, making the job a lot harder for them? Yes. And, and, and as a result, I think the second most wounded people in the church, not only those that are on the fringes, which is what this training is really designed for, the second, the second folks are the leaders that are in a fishbowl all the time. And they're pouring it out, laying their lives down, and they can't be safe to be themselves to, to reveal their trauma. They will be yeah. shot on sight, and they yeah, will be the removed. Percentages from are so ministry. high. It's not yeah. okay. Yeah, the percentages so. are so high of the numbers who the number of pastors who are ready to quit, and the ones who have already walked away, and especially post COVID, it's like, um, and the it's it is one of the hardest jobs on on the planet. But thank God there's hope, and I'm saying there's hope. There's hope. And so we're going to ask some Chris some questions today. And uh, and Chris, so even if you're ready, I've got some, I have questions for yeah, you. If let's you're go, ready. let's do it. All righty. Okay. So you started off right off the bat. You started saying that we're going to talk about some core challenges, three core challenges. I'm I'm very curious as to see what are you seeing that we, that you want to tell us about today? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to come back to the share screen here. So. I want to make sure that my my screen is aligned here. Okay, good. Okay. So moving down the, the road here, Marlene, I do want to 
ask and 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 have all of us consider imagine a world friends where we're overcoming church hurt and mm -hmm. while finding an emotionally healthy church family expression locally where you belong you can mature lovingly and relationally over time while growing into into the fullness of your calling okay so who is this training for why well, highlighted here the leader is interested in increasing emotional health of the culture but if you look around the circle here it's for these folks as well it's those looking mm -hmm. for a new church or a spiritual family that are done the duns okay those are go these guys over here how about those are thinking about leaving church they're frustrated with church community or they're planting a church starting a life on life journey together with others so that's basically what this chat is going to be about and as before we even get to the to that i do want to tell a quick story you you, you heard my my sharing about the uh 2007 where the the love affair began with this book right here the green book living from the heart <laughs> jesus gave you um you know i i was a guy i i came up from uh i didn't grow up in a christian house i was um uh my my parents they loved me very much and then they were stuck in a lot of places and addiction and and mental health stuff and mm -hmm. and then i was into performance and but i didn't grow up you know a believer like i said and uh, but I was always very drawn to healthy community. I was always very drawn to helping people. I was the guy where people would come to me and they would ask a lot of questions and I just was a calming presence for people. So I became a counselor and a therapist. But before doing that, uh, Marlene, I ended up in addiction. Um, I ended up in a, a, a near tragic experience of taking my life. The Lord came and showed up in a dramatic way. And when I was transformed from that one encounter, it marked me almost 30 years later now when I was a young man and a lot more hair and a lot more uh, dark, dark beard and less, you know, a lot more thinner than I am right now. But um, so you, you right now, just a little bit of my journey, just so you guys are hearing me come to you. I come to you as a, as a friend. I come to you as someone that has been broken, not only before I came to Christ, but even during my faith journey. I also, there was a falling out where I was in ministry, a bivocational pastor, uh, church planner, um, I've, I've had, I have businesses, uh, open and close. Uh, I had a lot of successes in ministry, a lot of more failures actually than successes in ministry, but, but with my counseling career, plus doing the ministry thing, um, I ended up, uh, let me see this guy in the computer here, just exploring, how do we marry these things? How do we bring together mm -hmm. in a simple, scalable, practical way mm -hmm. of actually learning how to attach well, which brought the healing from the revelation from the life model works book. Uh, living mm -hmm. from the heart Jesus gave you. So, so based on that, if you guys get to know me a little bit more, you know that I'm passionate about this subject. I'm not someone, I'm not an author. I don't want to write books. I don't even, I, I did this training. It took a lot for me to do this. I'm like a trainer kind of, kind of person where I like to get dirty in the weeds and like get my hands into it experientially and figure out if someone walks out of prison tomorrow and they start stepping into some of these things, they can do it just like this without mm -hmm. no matter where they're at on their religious or non-religious experiences. So a little bit about that. So, so moving forward on the, the thing that here was the number one question. I know as my wife was a part of life model works and the emails that come in, I, mean, I know you guys get it every day. How do we practically walk out such amazing life-changing information that we're learning regarding emotionally healthy relational discipleship? And I won't tell you guys the whole story, but basically it just started with a few friends and then it just kept moving on. And I met a, met a friend of mine in the middle picture here. His name's Rob, who saw me. He believed in me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he gave me a place to actually develop this ministry that, that I now come before you today as a representative in partnership with Life Model Works. And my friend Rob was into disciple making. And we came together from a place that he's like, hey, you're into that emotionally healthy stuff. I said, yeah, you're into that discipleship stuff. Let's, let's be friends. And then what ended up happening, I met uh, my buddy Mike in this picture. We had a few friends. We did life together, life on life in small spaces, which is what was the ingredient that was accelerating emotional maturity and health for us in a very simple, practical way by using just a few relational skills. And then, then as you guys know, what's the next question we all get? And maybe some of you are on this call, you've emailed Life Model, you've asked them this. Where do we find, Marlene, where is the, where's the churches that are doing this? Come on. They're trying yes. to walk this thing out. Where's the directory? Where's the pastor? Can you can 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 I shake their hands? Can I just go to that church? And uh, mm -hmm. it's a vexing question, isn't it? It uh, is. So I, I just wanted to take a few minutes just to, as you all are, are maybe have comments or questions, go ahead and put them in the chat as we're going to move down the road here. So having said that, 
here, but here are the three obstacles that we're going to talk about. So here's the deal, what we've seen in, 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 in our experience working with people, having planted a church, walking out a lot of life model principles and concepts in a way where we've had some successes and failures and being in, having my, our fingers on the pulse of internationally with leaders that are leading networks and movements and, and all of that good stuff. The, one of the things we see is ongoing rupture culture. That's the first thing. The next one is that we see a lot of transactional based relationships. And third, there's, of course, you all, this won't be a surprise to you, but a lack of gentle protectors. So if I were to unpack that, Marlene, really quick, ongoing rupture culture means when, pastor, when your congregate comes up to you and says, well, what's your take on the vaccine? What is your position on this political issue? Um, you know, do you like the color blue? I'm being, I'm being facetious right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we, we can so easily break relationships with people with ruptures and make make the problems more important than the relationships mm -hmm. without and having intentional focus to develop systems and structures to repair well after a rupture, toxicity will ensue, my friends, making it unsafe and impede our ability to overcome, heal, grow, and thrive. So Marlene, the first thing we need to do is we gotta have a strategy to deal with ongoing rupture. Okay, we gotta yes. learn how to repair well. Marlene, do you agree with that? I just want to- I, I do, because it automatically, I start thinking about the consumeristic attitude. It's all about yes. me. It's all about me. And you want to think, did the Lord say to move? Did the Lord say to, you know, for, for all the different things that are happening in their lives? It's like, no, this is what I feel. This is what I like. And, and I have a right. And uh, and so this consumer, it's about me. So I, I like this topic. When, you, when I first saw rupture culture, I said, well, what are you talking about? Yeah. But uh, I get it now, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, my friend. And uh, so basically, if, if it weren't, if we have a rupture culture, that means we have a, uh, a sec we don't have a securely attached culture. Okay, sure. it's kind of the antithesis to that. And uh, if we have insecure attachments, if we understand Dr. Wilder's work and, and all of the, the neural theology behind that is that it, be, it, it heaps more trauma. So if, if, if you're a pastor also, I get it too, like, to get, they, did you guys realize in seminaries, you'll have professors, I, I heard this in the last year, it blew my mind away. They actually train their ministers on not to fully attach to their people. Yeah, heard that too. Yeah. Oh my, let's just, yeah. can we just take a minute yeah. and like take yeah. a breath on that? What? Yeah. Huh? Like, uh, okay, I, I I think I've made my point and I'll, 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 I'll move on from there. But like that, that is not okay. Like just, right, Marlene? Like that's- yeah. You want to talk yeah. about shepherding and, and like, but we're going to do it like from a distance like this and not securely attach or have seminaries train us on how to securely attach. Yes. Where so the first and you, second commandment is about yeah. love him and love uh, one yeah. another. And that's the great, anyway, go ahead. What were we going to say? No, you can actually stop right there. That's, yeah. that's, let's go home. Meet. That's no, it. We're ready. Because really, seriously, how many <laughs> pastors are trying to figure out, you know, how do you turn this around? It's like, if we just work on some secure attachments here. Let's go after the, from that standpoint, because you just answered a, a, a growing question in pastors' minds. They see the rupture happening and not knowing what to do with this. And it's happening everywhere. Um, so thank you. No, I'll let you go on, but this is good no, that's stuff. Cool. So thank you, Chris. No, I appreciate that. And and the world is just as embraced this like a badge of honor with um, as far as just, I mean, scroll on Facebook for about five minutes. If you don't agree with me, I'll unfriend you. I mean, I could go on and on, but guess what, gang? If the, the world does things, the church is kind of the bellwether that leads the way onto a reflection of things in our society. So we've got to take some ownership of this and just call it for what it is. But we got to know what the problem is before we can get to the solution. Okay, let's move forward. Yeah. All right. So the next part is we're going to talk about, if I can get my slide thing to work here. Come on, there it is. Transactional-based relationships. Now, those of you that know a bit about those maturity charts, this is another way of saying in the child stage, we learn how to take care of ourselves, okay? When we reach adult stage, we actually learn to have mutually satisfying relationships. So another metric and a marker for me in discipleship and when, when we're working with our people and discipling them relationally is like, how do we get them to an adult stage to help fill those child stage, mm -hmm. those infant stage gaps as quickly as possible? Now, Chris, are you saying your people quickly get there? It's de It depends for everybody, but we have a roadmap and a track for them to help step into some of those things. But based on this slide here, children are tasked to master learning how to take care of themselves well. 
When children are not given the permission pathway or tools to do so, this dynamic leads to devastating consequences relationally well into adulthood. Ergo, narcissism. Ergo, the Pandora problem that we have. Okay. When family systems do not provide the relational skills training to care for oneself growing up, a generation will become spouses and parents who cannot have mutually satisfying relationships. Yes. What do we think about that, Marlene? Well, I'm I'm just looking at the, just the breakdown of the family in, yeah. in the church where we should be the model for the rest of the world, but we tend to lead the percentages sometimes in divorces. And so all of this is just so relevant for where we are as a church um, that we can, we can turn this around. And that's where I'm going to give the hope. We get to turn this around. It's going to take a season to get this to happen. We're not going to see this next year, 10 years. We're talking about decades to turn this around um, as we correct our thinking. Now, here's the thing too. You're going to have people in our congregations and our churches and our small groups and micro churches, and people are going to come and they, they want to be uh, taken care of. There's nothing wrong with that spiritually, formationally. It's not that's actually a need that we all have, especially if we're younger in our faith. But that never goes away. But what if we have pastors too that they're stuck in? It's 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 kind of becomes this thing for believers and leaders. It becomes this quid pro quo thing. What we can get from one another, yeah, and yeah. that is the way children think. <laughs> it doesn't yes. make them bad people. It's just an immature expression of that. And when yeah. you get hundreds of people in a congregation together that is a recipe for disaster because here's what's going to happen for the people who are church hurt from the believer side is they're going to feel used they're going to feel eventually a cog in the machine you hear it all the time um that you know that they don't care and i share this with my pastor and he never shows up and, blah, blah, blah. and over time it just becomes this critical thing which you know people don't realize the hard work that pastors are trying because systemically we're not even setting up adult parent elder state systems as leaders to actually help train the congregation to become incubators for mutually satisfying relationships. Now, some mm -hmm. of that maybe sound a little gobbledygoopy. We'll, we'll, we'll unpack that more when we get to the seven rhythms. But I just want to lay out the problem first before we get to that. All right, Marlene, yeah. let's go to the last one. Now, yeah. I don't think I need to say a minute more on this, but we Ooh. actually kind of have a, I might have you teach on this and give no, us a no. little, like, a, a little, little uh, exposition on this. But basically yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking down here. A gentle protector is someone who loves well when it's difficult to make relationships bigger than problems and is skilled at removing toxic shame from situations is the model of emotional health, stability, maturity. Um, and, and basically what about, here's my question. What about training and loving one another well? How to develop a culture of heaven saturated in God's love? See, Ooh. like model works. Let's go to the resource. Let's get. Let's go to the videotape. Let's get all of the resources from Life Model, Deeper Walk, all of our our brother and sister ministries that are doing great work and resources to actually inform us on how to become a gentle protector. Yeah. Even Marcus Warren talks about rare leadership. It's another kind of way to say this as well. So. Ergo, any, anything else, uh, Marlene? Because I think I'm yeah, not going to put that dead horse for like 10 yeah, more it, seconds. Right. Yeah, this is this is Christianity 101. Just this question that you're asking is Christianity 101, Discipleship 101, and some of the things that we don't see in our discipleship program. So I'm excited to see the turn and to see these hard questions being asked and posed to leaders to say, have you included this? Is this a part? Are you teaching your people how to love one another well? how to have mutually satisfying, you know, um, relationships. And so we, we will do better. We can do better. We will do better. And I'm for any leaders who ever get to hear this, it's like, guys, this is, this is where we get to start turning the ship for helping people to live this abundant life that Jesus said that we can have, you know? Amen. So I figure let's just take a minute to just take a little quieting. We just shared some information here. We're going to do some joy and rest building right now. And if anyone in the chat, like I said, um, love to, I don't know, Mercy, how are we doing on the, I uh, want to do a check-in here. Do we have any questions? Um, good, good. Um, we just have one question. Oh. Um, somebody, uh, Joel asked, he said, by transactional, I think when you were talking about the transactional relationships, your second point there, um, are you referring to value being based on what uh, they do rather than who they are? Yeah, it's a great question. So when people used to come to the ministry I was leading, I'd be like, oh, this person would be great for this. And 
these folks kind of have an affinity for this over here, which is cool. Um, and I was thinking of how to have, and, and there's nothing wrong with this necessarily, but today I don't lead with that. What I lead with is the value of a person and what lights them up. Mm. What brings life to them? What helps them live fully alive from the heart Jesus gave them? What is the discovery process as a leader stepping into that? And as living stones, how do we help fit those pieces together in a structure that Jesus is building as I build people up? I can't build the church, but I can build people. And I can call out and encourage and mirror back to them who they really are, yeah. truly and fully. And what brings life to them and yeah. life abundantly. Yes, yes. Because they're seeing, you're seeing them when they show up, not just seeing their giftings. It's like, and you know, we've got this thing, your gift makes room for you. And that's what the word says, yeah. but we sure have abused that and people have been lost and hurt. And so I love the fact that you're seeing them for who they are when they walk in. And, and some of it too, and I, I'm not, please don't hear me. And, you know, I don't want leaders to get upset with me because I've done this. So I'm coming, I'll be the first to fall on the sword on this. It's like, we need someone to make the coffee. We need the parking lot attendants. We need the greeters. Like, and, and, and like, we are so much more than those functions within the house of God. I'm just going to let that land too for a little bit, especially for leaders who I love you. We have to keep the lights on. We got to function. We got to operate and people get a chance to volunteer and ush and collect the money plates and do the worship teams and the prayer teams and this, but there's like a whole bunch of the week and time out there of kingdom that needs expressed of Jesus. People, the, the world needs good news outside of our church meetings more than just what we're doing inside of the rhythms that we're calling people into to spend time on a Sunday or a Wednesday night or whatever. So when I say transactional, sometimes it could become you seeing right through people. I've done this as a leader, as a function of the thing that we're building here, but the people are not getting built up and they see that over time they feel quote used or they try to have their uh, things, the assignments that, that are, are kingdom based and it's in the marketplace or it's in the arts environment or it's uh, in the media or, you know, whatever it is, whatever that other sphere of society is. And the pastor says, that's great, Chris, I'll pray for you. Go get him, buddy. Rock and roll. And meanwhile, I'm going, ah, I, I've served 20 years here. Wait a minute. This is this is my heart. Ah, so that's where we ran into trouble a little bit, Marlene, on transactional based relationships. For sure. Okay. Anything yeah, else, yeah. Uh, Mercy? Are you seeing any other questions? Or are we going to fly on through? Yeah. So we got one more question. Um, okay. How Robert asked, um, how do we transition to ordaining gentle protectors as leaders mm. of congregations? from seminary graduates with low, no protector skills. Wow. Yeah. Man, that's a whole nother. I think we got to come back in, in next month and do a webinar on that, Marlene. <laughs> that is an amazing question because there's so many theological things and practical things and elders. What does an elder define? If we define that, does an elder mean someone who's coming up through the system and has practiced the principles and has become a parent to those that are living the culture? Does it mean... You know, I'm a, a person of influence and my and I'm a pastor. And I'm like, hey, Harry and my friend here. And does that is that the elder board right there? Like it's so and I'm not I'm not making fun. I'm please don't please. I'm not insulting anybody. I'm just that is a huge question. Marley, I, actually, I'll I'll, I'll I'll throw you under the bus on that. Do you want to take that one? How no, we... I, I, that, that is a big topic because I think that's one of the things that where we are, we are, we are as a church because the predators have been left to, to themselves. Woo. And so I, I know wow. for us, we are, we're addressing it in all of the city events. If you get a chance to go to the city events, our topic is maturing into gentle protectors. And so I'm sitting on the front row because I want to hear, and I'm, I'm curious to know what is, what are those little things that need to be tweaked in our hearts and lives that just changes us from, from a predator behavior that we're not even recognizing to mm. as this gentle protector where I, other people feel safe around me. And I guess that is the, if we could, we almost need a discipleship 101 for people coming into ministry. Say, okay, how are you coming into ministry? And that's one of the ones that needs to be at the top of the list is showing just some very simple steps to say, and here's how you're coming in as a protector. It's not about you anymore. It's about the people. And will you provide a safe place for these people to live and to grow and to thrive? And it can't be about the vision you're holding in your hand. Okay, I won't go there, but it's all about the vision, guys. Line up for the vision. And so, okay, I'm done with that one, but... And I have my friend, John Saunders. I see you, buddy, on the call. We had actually had this conversation this morning. 
and how the, you know, here's the tragedy is that so many elders are put in positions and they're, they're operating outside of their skis and, yes. and they're out in front. And it, it, I mean, that's the tragedy of this. If you, if I, if I had to be really frank with all y'all um, and then you come and serve in that organization, you're actually growing your maturity and someone who's in an elder stage, that's really a child emotionally, they're really stuck there or an infant. And that can create a lot of pressure and tension for us to actually stay in those churches, which it can actually create more, here we go, church hurt. And how do we navigate that? So I, we are always about empowering and equipping the everyday disciple to be a solutionary. To You start being a gentle protector. You start modeling this and living this out. You know what's going to happen? God is going to promote that. Eventually in time, he will shine a light on you in that, and you will have more influence to speak into some of this stuff that we're talking about here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That, Why don't that's we, our uh, challenge. That, yeah, go ahead. That's our what's challenge. What's next, Marlene? Right? What are we talking about next? Um, and I, I just want to speak to that a little bit. That yeah, is for all of us who've been with this, especially for those of who's been with this for a while, is that the challenge is for us to really just not present this as left brain things to, to anyone, but we get to saturate ourselves with this. So it's leaking out of us and people are asking what changed, what's different about you. They okay. should see something. And so that's what we're, I know as Life Model Works, we're actually inviting people to this journey of like, let's revisit and let's revamp and revive and let's saturate into this, a whole, you know, saturate ourselves in a whole lot more with this. But yeah, you've got to answer some more questions for me because you talked about that. We, you can help us identify an emotionally healthy spiritual family culture. What does that look like? Yeah. So we need that answered, please, sir. All right, let's do it. And I also want to walk into this. I will hit this at the end too. I want to just, here's what I want to say. It, pastor, leader, friend, the ministry you guys are on this, gals are on this call, the ministry you love, things are working, things are popping. I want you to hear me on this. This is the warning label. This is not to say if you're not doing Hesed's version of the seven, you know, core foundations, does this mean we're quote unhealthy? No, please do not. Please don't hear that. Or though people are going to hear what they're going to hear. I can't control that. But I want you to, at least you hear my heart up to this point. This is about for us studying this. We've been doing this. I've been doing this for a long time. And I've been stepping in for a number of years now, training, developing people in this stuff and having friends that haven't come quite, quite crossed the bridge yet. This is coming out of a tender place for me. This is about a, a gentle audit and examination, not onto heaping toxic shame. There's a big word, toxic shame onto people, but it's equipping them. If you could just take one of these things, and we're going to talk about that one thing at the end. If you just make one small pivot into some of these rhythms and practice, guess what happens? Your culture gets healthier. Yay! Yeah, that's the goal of this. Yeah. Okay, it's not to take this information and go to your pastor and blowtorch him. Please don't do that. Please and don't put my name on it. You go do your own <laughs> training and go do that and burn the house to the ground. That's not okay. Okay. Also, for my leadership friends, it, consider what I'm sharing with you as a, as a as a as a peer, as someone who's in the trenches with you every single day, yeah, with a bunch of people, a, a tidal wave of people that don't want this for the most part in our culture, especially our church culture. So I come mm -hmm. to you with humility and tenderness. All right, let's do it, Mar Marlene. I'm going to throw right. up the, the presentation. All right, let's do it. Let's How do I identify an emotionally healthy spiritual family culture? Woo! Oh. All right, let's go. What we got? Making the case. All right. So, of course, I got to come back to my, my slide here. The goal is to experience an emotionally healthy Christ-centered family expression where you belong, can spiritually, emotionally mature, and grow into the fullness of your calling. Just to remind us what this presentation is about, about building these things. Okay, you're looking at this screen right now. This is a tool we created where we encourage people to actually ask your pastors. And I'm going to actually do a little bigger screen here so you can see some of these questions. Yeah, seven questions to finding emotionally healthy spiritual family. Okay, now, now mind you, my friends, this is meant for people that are, have left church and they're done, or maybe they want to go back. And they want to interact with pastors, leaders, board members. So these are the seven questions that set the context for the seven core rhythms. I won't read this to you. Um, we will, we, you know, you'll have access to all this stuff if you reach out to us at support at hasseddiscipleshipnetwork.com. Support at hasseddiscipleshipnetwork.com. Okay. Our seven questions to finding emotionally healthy family is the tool we use to introduce the framework to help others identify cultures of ongoing rupture transactional based relationships and where there may be a lack of gentle protectors. Yeah. All right, Chris. So what is it? Here it is. I'm going to go through these one at a time. I'm not going to do a whole deep exposition on them, 
but I will touch on all seven of these rhythms just so you can just kind of read them, let it absorb them a bit. And then at the end of the training, we're going to give you a resource to go to to actually take a, a deeper dive into this. So number one, community confirmation clarity. So this is what this means, leaders and friends. This means that if I were, I'm going to come, oh, I'm going to come out of that screen for a second. If I were to interview you and I say, hey, pastor, tell me about the vision of this church. And he shares and he's passionate and this, that, and the other thing. And then I go to his community pastor or his worship team. I go, hey, what's this church about? Oh, it's about this, this, and this. And then I go to the board and I ask this. Oh, it's and I, I go to people in the church and I say, hey, what, what, what is it? Tell me, who are you guys? We are people who? Tell me about you. And if I get like all these different things kind of all over the place, that's that's just, it is what it is. So there's, there's kind of, it's low on the clarity as far as like the direction that they're heading as, as a family of believers. It's not a bad thing if there's not that clarity. It's just, here's the thing is that what that tells me is that they're going to go from here to here to here to here. And some of that can be a trauma, a trigger. It can be, not necessarily. That's not to indict any other kinds of expressions of church. It just means that, like, that's why we do identity statements. We are people who... Okay, and it actually drives it in and everyone's saying the same thing. It's such a simple phrase. Thank you, Michael Hendricks and Jim Wilder for the other half of church. That cha game changer, game changer. That's why every pastor needs that book to then have identity statements to say, we are people who everybody can say it. That brings clarity. Okay, that's number one. All right, let's keep going. Also, it's important to have a process uh, for uh, believers, if they're thinking about joining a spiritual family, that here's the thing, actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop sure again. Here's the thing too. By show of hands, how many of you ask your friends about going on vacations or food or uh, a movie you want to go see or something like that? By show of hands, how many people ask for reviews and all that? Or you go to Angie's list when you want to hire a vendor or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wh why do we, with everything else in the world, but yet are we interviewing? Are we asking friends that are not even connected with the church? What does the community say about that church? Again, my leaders, my friends don't get upset with me. Like, well, they don't get us. They don't understand. We're kind of insular. That's, that's okay. That's okay. No, nope. not toxically shaming you. I'm not even shaming you. I'm just saying, how often do we do that? But yet we don't find out and do a little more investigation of what is the community even? How do they see us? How are we representing? How are we representing out there? Yeah, so yeah. I'm just giving you context for that question. Okay, gang, there's no judgment statements about that. It's an important piece and a rhythm to this. All right. So clarity is number one. Here we go. Let's keep going. All right. Number two. My slide will work. Come on, slide. All right. Um, navigating overwhelm well, knowing how to navigate overwhelming situations and difficult relationships is a skill that is critical to lay the foundations of a safe environment for others to have a chance to build secure attachments mm -hmm. with one another and the marker of a general protective faith community. <clears throat> Excuse me. In other words, here's what that means. Uh, with this particular situation, how does the, that church community or us as leaders, how do we handle big emotions that are going to happen? <laughs> and is the reason that causes most ruptures because we don't, it's not even, and, and, and are we even allowing big emotions to come up or are we suppressing them? Okay. So these are just some, some questions to think about as far as, do we have a process for our people that knows how to deal when big emotions come out? Do we have a simple set of relational skills? Okay. Let's go to number three, healing restoration protocols. Now mm -hmm. here was the impetus behind that one. Church communities with an integrated culture of healing, practitioners and leaders collaborating can create a powerful context for healing and transformation to emerge. So I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to tell you a quick example of that. So maybe you're in a church right now, you have a recovery ministry, you have counselors over here, hopefully, right? And you're referring people over here and then you got the recovery thing over here. Then you've got the grieving group over here and then you've got this healing ministry or you got Sozo, you've got... I don't want to offend anybody. I'm just I'm just throwing out different ministries. And everyone, thankfully, has a passion to say, Pastor, I want to start a healing ministry. And you, they say, great, let's go do that. And then what happens is you get these little subcultures based on the models and the healing that take place. It's like, I don't trust that one over there. And, the, and then all of a sudden, there's like this trauma bonding that starts happening. 
and it's not integrated. And we're just turning loose all these ministries where it could become a mess. It could, not always, but it can. And there's no strategic kind of way to kind of like, if, if the person is a congregational pastor or the healing pastor that's overseeing all that stuff, how is the integration going between all of those ministries? Mm -hmm. Because there are things that they're strong in and weak in. If we know the strengths and weaknesses of each of these, and what they, the gifts they bring to the table and extract that and honor each other at the table of healing. <gasps> oh, my word. You want to talk about a health meter? Go like this. Unbelievable. And this is for leaders to really consider. And you, if you're a healing minister, you're doing a manual prayer and you're at your church right now. How integrated are you with the rest of the family of what's going on there? Yeah. And if you're not, that's an important question that maybe Mr. or Mrs. Pastor needs to really needs to address. Uh, Marlene, what are you thinking? Wow. I know because I'm thinking of some situations where they didn't know what the other one was doing and and the respect wasn't there. And so it's really we're just asking for, you know, you're just asking people just to respect and to see and honor what's in the, each other. But let's uh, let's not fall over each other, run over each other, but we're going to hold each other in high esteem. But what one we're walking is one. And that's what we're all expecting when we go to these any place that we're looking at. Everybody's going in the same direction, working on the same task together. And we're always, and I know, I hear, I hear the cries, gang. You're, you, some of you, like, pastor's just not getting a manual here. Like, he's into this thing over here. It's hurt. That hurts. Like, that really hurts when you're not seen and you're trying to bring this to your people because mm -hmm. it had such an impact. And it doesn't get, like, first-class treatment. Just because it's impacted the pastor, he's into this or he or she or into that. Like, that's painful. That's painful. So I'm just, this, there's no judgments on them. I'm just, I'm just laying the case out for you, okay? Is there an integrated culture? All right, next. Okay. There Relational go. skills training. I will take five seconds on this one. And Marlene could probably take, you know, 25 more minutes uh, no, uh, no, of the no. amazing greatness of this. I don't think I need to say much about this. This is for my friends that wouldn't know a relational skill if it hit them on the top of the head if it with a baseball bat. OK, um, we're not born knowing how to love well, friends. And does does our church communities, does our spiritual families, do we have intentional relational skills training? OK, however you choose to get that. And Life Model is the premiere of that. Go get it. All right. Here's the next one, intentional developmental pathway. And if you notice, it's highlighting gold for a reason, which I'll get to in a second. But think about this. How many of you have children that go through sports that go from junior varsity to varsity to maybe college level or when they're elementary school, they move to middle school. There's like levels that people, children walk through or with music or, you know, name the thing, the volunteer thing, the training thing, the the martial arts thing, whatever that is, there is a pathway for us all the way through. And then we become adults and it's kind of like we're on our own after that. But here's what happens. We are created, okay, in Christ Jesus to do good things. All of us are. It's his desire that we have a unique set of good works that's achieved through grace rather than earning it. But our identity in Christ has both assignments that are unique and beautiful before heaven. Is there a customized and intentional discipleship track that provides support and ongoing coaching? All right, I'm going to do a little comment on that real quick. Here's what I'm saying to you is that we like challenges but much and we like novelty and challenge, whether we think so or not. That's why people like sports. That's why people like read a book and it like just kind of like fires up all the creative, good neurochemicals, Whee! trainings, conferences, interactions. Blah, 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 blah. We also like challenge. We want to we want to grow. It's innate in us to go from a baby to a child to an adult to a parent, to an elder. It's, it's, it's already born in us. The thing is, is that I think a lot of our churches, they're just like, well, you know, God will, will disciple you. It's organic. Although on Sundays, we're going to get the teachings. But do we have a vision of development for our people, okay, that brings them from point A to point B and to encourage them at their pace? It's not forcing people. It's not browbeating them into it, but it's painting the picture, okay? of like, I don't want to stay stuck and immature. I want to actually grow. That's why we go to Sunday Bible study school. And, you know, we do the Sunday morning classes and we want to grow in the book of Ephesians and we want to learn more and grow. But there's something in us. That's, I don't know who this is for, 
But maybe there's something in you of a seed of something that you have a call on your life and it doesn't fit in within the church structure and it's a call outside of church. Who's developing you in that? Who's walking alongside of you? Now, Mr. Pastor, Mrs. Pastor, I'm not, not coming down on you because you are busy, busy, busy. And you've got to bring the word. You've got to make sure teams don't fall apart and budgets and the lights got to stay on and the system's got to go like this. However, comma, what if, what if pastors, leaders, we begin to think through our designs of like the vision that we have? What is if we want to go like we want to be this? So here's what we say has said our Thrive Microchurch. We want to learn to live fully alive from the heart Jesus gave us in the context of an emotionally healthy community. That's our statement. We create pathways and trainings that point towards that outcome. Now, everyone's at different places of all that. And we don't shame people and name people into not doing or doing because people just come check out their, it's okay. But the ones we're going to hold up are the ones that are moving into towards that because that's the vision that the Lord gave to us to steward. And we've got to create pathways that we all start intentionally moving that way. So Marlene, basically what I'm trying to say is, is that just to be a little more intentional, just think it through a little bit for our leaders. I mean, think about this gang. If your daughter or your son, let me say it another way like this. Mommy, daddy, I want to be, I want to, I want to be an actor and perform in the plays. You say, well, son, just go figure it out. Go, I don't know, maybe a drama department over there. Let me pray for you. I'll lay hands on you. And, uh, you know, you come back and maybe we have family dinner. You can tell us about it. What? No, 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 no. You would be like, well, okay, here's as the parent, let's call. Let's find out who the drama department, who the teachers are. Oh, you want to go to college, do that? And you're with them in it and you're helping them along a process where they're in acting class one and next year it's improvisation. And then the year after that, it's about singing and performing and learning how to tap dance. Okay, honey, I'm there. Yay, with the pom-poms and it's opening night and I'm throwing roses to my children because they just, I saw where they were and here's where they are. Oh my God. Jesus has a story for all of you. I'm telling you something right now. I don't know this is for. You have something like that where Jesus wants to throw roses at you and the people that are in your family to celebrate. You living fully alive and stepping into your destiny. I'm just telling you right now. It's true. Mm -hmm. If we have a culture of that now, Chris, what are you talking about? I've got, I'm, I'm drowning here. Yeah, I get it, Mr. Pastor. I know. Believe me, I know. <laughs> That's why we got to start thinking these things through and start having intentionality and strategy and designs that lead towards an outcome. All right, Marlene, any comments on that? I don't want to beat the dead horse anymore on that one. No, that's perfect because just making room for people, again, it's back to just seeing them when they come yes. and they're just not a part of the whole congregation, but somebody sees me and somebody's heard me and somebody's actually said, hey, what about? The networking begins with, so I love the churches that have networkers everywhere. It's like, hey, you need to meet so-and-so. Hey, here's the next class that I think would be good for you. And constantly doing that, those are the best environments to be a part of. And that's what it sounds like you're you're creating here. Thanks, Marley. So we're going to go about a little bit, 10 more minutes, guys. We started at five after. So whenever you need to jump off, that's cool. So I'm just going to, I'm going to keep going here as we're moving on down the track. Leaders are responsible for the cultures they create. I talked about this earlier. It starts inwardly with others able to recreate only that which one has received. Watch for church communities and networks that are intentionally producing and multiplying current and future thriving ministry leaders. So I'm going to tell a story about that real quick. Um, my buddy, Mike and I, who co-founded has said, I think he's on his call too. Uh, we visited a pastor up in a Midwest city. He leads a very successful disciple making church planning ministry. <clears throat> Mike and I, we, we had lunch with him and his board members. Cause we were doing some ministry training stuff. And, uh, you know, it was, I, 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 it was so funny because he's, you know, we said, Hey Matt, like, you know, he's telling all these amazing, he's checking the the box of accomplishments and he's like one of the best mm -hmm. of the best in the city. Like everybody knows, everybody loves him. His wife's there at the, at the lunch table. The board members are there and they're all smiling. And and I looked and I looked at Mike and he's like, yeah, do it. I said, I said, Matt, what lights you up? He goes, man, I love cowboy ranching. I just, I want to get on the ranch. Like he started doing this and leaning in his glasses came off, his hair came down. Like this guy, this cat's lit up. He's just like, man. And everyone, like his wife too, they're all like, 
Like they're all nervous because it's like, is this guy going to be a rant? Is he quitting? Is he leaving? What's going mm -hmm. on here? This is crazy. And in that moment, I saw that guy light up in a way he probably hasn't lit up in a long time because he can't talk about that stuff. So as a leader, as a pastor, do you have those places where people are pouring into you without you being the minister for everybody else? Where are those spaces for those people? Mm -hmm. OK, do you know your pastor's shalom story? That's what we call it, has said. What sure. lights your pastor up? Go ask him. He'll just he'll, he'll, he'll be more than happy to tell you. And then, you know what? Start sewing into that. Oh, yes. You want to start making a difference in your church and win some currency? Not that you're manipulating, taking advantage. You're doing what Jesus would do. Wash his feet. Yeah. Give him a gift of the thing that lights him up. Chris, you don't understand. My pastor doesn't get me. I, no, I get it. Look, look <laughs> on both sides of the equation. I get it. But it, let it start with you. If you're on this call right now, let it start with you to sow. Because you know what? God's, God pays well. He pays you back. He pays you back and he sees it and he raises it. Okay. All right. Yes. Enough about that. All right. Let's Good. go on to the last one. I, I loved how you turned this. You turned it. It was all about what the leaders need to do. And now you turned it to us. And this is what you need to do for your leaders. Okay. We're, we're with you. <laughs> we're with you. <laughs> all right. Here's the last one. I call this the uh, kingdom adulting crisis we have. How many, how many in, in our in our TV shows, lexicon, you got to adult up. You got to adult. You got to do hard things. It's about being a grown up. If it, what we recommend is, 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 is do, another core rhythm is having healthy kingdom sending as a mindset. Now this, this mm -hmm. kind of, this really kind of scratches the record now for some. And to find a tribe that recognizes how uniquely gifted and wonderfully designed you are. And here's the key, intentionally preparing you for your mission and your destiny to be sent into. What, Chris, what are you talking about? This is like Greek or Hebrew. You're talking like funny language right now. No, but think about it this way. And there's no shame in the game here. I mean, I'm just calling to trigger anybody. You have a 40-year-old son or daughter living in your basement still. I mean, just in, in, in the world, we'll look at that and have a few questions and maybe a few comments about that. We've got believers in the church for 40 years and they're still not fully stepping into the thing that God has. That's not an indictment or criticism. I love, I, look, I love, look, guys, it's a shepherd teacher model where in shepherding, it's like, come on in, keep the wolf out. Let me give you some hot cocoa, a little bit of honey. You know, let's just, let's get the fire going and let's just hang out. Yes. Or a teacher. It's like, wait, I need you guys. I got to want to teach you guys about the word, making sure we're rightly dividing the word of truth. I want to preach someone to Christians in that space. But guess what? That's only partially who Jesus is. He has, he has multiple faces. He's also someone that wants to advance the kingdom. He's also someone that senses things spiritually from the Father and be able to says some of that. He's also one that goes after the lost and goes after them to make sure that they're home and are adopted into the family. So there's a number of faces of Jesus where what I'm talking to you about is the face that says, hey, I want you to go. I want to send you with a blessing into your thing. And by the way, I always say to our people, I said, I want you to supersede what we're doing. I want you to be more successful in whatever it is, ministry, business, whatever it is, than what we are sowing into you. Please do that. Please let me come to your trainings. Please let me sit at your feet so that you can teach me. Okay. That is a gentle protector and an under shepherd that's actually elevating Christ in people to go live fully alive and to do their destiny. Now, I don't want to blow anyone's circuits right now. I'm just telling you, I'm using family language with you, but yet when I translate it into the church, which is family, <laughs> are you hearing me, ladies and gentlemen? It's the, it's the same. It one The trauma bleeds into the other, as does the healing, as does the healthy rhythms of a family. If you look at these seven questions, these seven principles, they're all taught in our families, whether it's intuitive or intentional. We all want to learn to quiet our children when they have big emotions. We all would walk with our kids to help them have a thriving lifestyle, no matter what that is, and reproduce that so the grandchildren are thriving. There's no one on this call that would say, Chris, that's crazy talk. None of you would do that. I hope not. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm overlaying family language with spiritual family language. Does that make sense? Marlene, does that? Is, yes. Am yes. I clear I on that? This. Or is, is there I, any questions on that? No, I love this last one because it's talking about having a kingdom mindset instead of your own little kingdom. And that's kind of what has happened in the past few decades of these little kingdoms. But it's like, if we stay kingdom focused and I can release you to go and expand the kingdom and not just stay within these four walls. So 
All right. Well, we gotta we gotta land the plane because I know we we want to honor everybody's time. I'm gonna lead us to the to the home to the uh, to the the airport here. Okay. As we're kind of heading down, I'm gonna take some more Q and A. Get back to my trusty little presenter here. So just so you guys know, I, I and I can get you guys the slides for this if you want. Just so you know, this is not theory. This is evidence. Some friends that are in our life. This Dominic doesn't even live in where we are. He's in another city across the country. Andrew is with us, and we have a a, 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 a church network locally and planting also. So I want to present to you, there is a solution that we've created to help others overcome church hurt. Okay. It's called Emotionally Healthy Spiritual Family Finder. That is the name of our solution. Okay. And uh, as, I, as I had some of the frequently asked questions here, uh, once again, I could get you all this information, but basically here's the deal. If you want mercy right now, to put into the to the the chat box where people can go ahead and access that. Basically, the the uh, the bottom line here is we want to uh, we're partnering with Life Model because I'm so glad Marlene allowed me to come on the call to do this. It's a course. It's a new training we're releasing. We're like it's like the book launch, and we wanted to give you guys value to kind of paint a picture for you. That page will explain it in depth. And give you more information. You see my goofy head, my egg head, explaining it a bit more for like a 10, 15 minute video. And there's an opportunity for you to actually, if you want to buy the course, um, you can go ahead and do that for what was uh, for $147. Okay. But today I want to give you guys a 20% uh, discount for, for being a part of this training and being on the call. And also offer a 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Now, when you get on there, there's bonuses too. I'm not going to unpack all this for you. You can go ahead and read that. But essentially, what we are giving to the world, essentially, people told us we're crazy. We have kind of, if you think about a high-dollar coaching and consulting track, what we're doing is we're actually giving the world all of those tools and resources where we have been hired privately to coach and train individuals and organizations on how to develop thriving discipleship pathways for them. Mm -hmm in our own private consulting. And the Lord has said, give this away, this part away. Now, Chris, you're crazy. You're going to run out of, no, here's the deal. We're going to give you all that content that's valued at $3,600 um, to you. However, we also are still coaching people. We're not charging that much anymore. So there is coaching opportunities um, to do that, but I'm not here to, to talk about that necessarily. I'm just telling you the context is that we want to make this so whoppingly valuable for you that you'd be crazy to spend $147 and you get over $3,800 in value. We also offer a strategy call, a brief strategy call to kind of navigate all this stuff with our team. It's about 15 to 20 minutes. That's the additional bonus. So I, I'm not really into sales too much. I, I, I don't really like that too much. I like to get you guys value. And if you like, if you like what I've told you today, just think more of that and deeper going down the rabbit hole of the stuff that we talked about. And you can take your time and but the, uh, the 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 code for this is going to expire uh, tomorrow. So here's the code. I think I'll put this um, into the chat here. Here it is. Life model 2024 in caps. That is your 20% discount. And for every purchase, part of these 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 purchases are going to go toward back to life model for their good graces to host this call today because we want to support this mission as well through pr providing valuable products, services that are advancing the kingdom of emotional health and relational discipleship yeah. so that everyone will know that we are his disciples by how we love one another. Has said Discipleship Network is committed to seeing emotionally healthy networks and movements in cities. So Marlene and I and the, these organizations, we work together. What we specialize in is seeing people in cities that begin to start living into this stuff we equip them and train them for free to go ahead and become a movement maker if that's something, but it starts with the small, it starts with the little things, just helping a few friends over a period of time. God gives more to you. He's going to give more influence to you in your church. And then where do we go from there, Chris? Well, I've got a family of friends that want to do this, but the church doesn't understand. That's okay. You just do life together and we'll help equip you some more. So anyway, that's it. That's kind of the, the quick and dirty. And Marlene, any final thoughts as we're you Glad know, I do. Here and saying, saying goodnight to everybody. Of course I do. Thank you guys. Hey, but here's on. what I, 
here's what you're going to see more of, of our partner ministries. And so for Rebecca and Chris Caputo, they are partner ministries. They carry the heart of the life model itself. And, um, and you're going to be seeing more of that. I love, you know, Chris, I just love the heart that you and Rebecca have for emotionally healthy people mm -hmm. in emotionally healthy church. And so that in that aspect, we're all on the same page with that. And so he has, I, we want it, and you'll see more as we be, present some of the other partners throughout the year in our other seminars that's coming up of what they're doing. We're all part of the same relational network and where each one offers you a different tool. And our job at this point is to ask the Lord, what do you have for me? What do you have for me with Chris's ministry? He, he shared a lot of information and that's an incredible package that you're offering. And so Chris, we just want to bless you and the entire network, Discipleship Network, wow. as you continue to pursue this. It's a very needed conversation at this time for the church, for the kingdom of God to expand. So we just want to bless you as we close today. And thank, thank you guys for joining us. And I just pray this, that the Lord just bless each one of you on your own journey, that you'll have eyes to see what he wants you to see for this season of your life, that you'll have ears to hear with him say, this is the way. And he calls your name. He says, this is the way walk in it mm -hmm. because his heart is for wholeness, for transformation, for this abundant life that he paid for. So I bless you, my friends, in 2024, that you touch something different. You touch something new that's been waiting there for you all along. Lord bless you. And we love you. Thanks for joining the call. And uh, I think we might be closing. So I just I thank you, my friend. I just want to say uh, thank you for this. Mercy. Thank you for your efforts today. Would you mind if I say a quick prayer to you? I'd love to yes, bless sir. everybody. With much joy and shalom. So, Father, thank you for this call today. Thank you for this budding partnership and relationship mm -hmm. between organizations that are on the same team. And let us be the first to model this to the world, Lord. Let us be the ones that are relationally honoring each other and seeing each other that the world will know that uh, there there are those of us that, that really want to love well, Lord. They're your people. Um, and it's hard, Lord. So give us grace right now, Lord. And I ask, pray for leaders right now too that may have seen this and they may be feeling some negative emotions, some triggers. I want to just bless them right now. Uh, you have my, you have my heart. You have my blessings. You have my encouragement. And uh, Father, I pray for our my friends that are on the fringes that have left church. Lord, in 2024, begin to start releasing mm -hmm. healing over people right now that they could get reintegrated into the family because we can't heal outside of family. It's not going to happen. So Lord, create safe spaces in cities across the earth. Maybe someone on this call right now will become a missionary to start planting emotional health and wellness where they are. It starts to grow and scale from there. Father, I pray for life model conferences coming up this year mm -hmm. and into next year as well, that people start gathering together, building relationships with one another that there would be this, this, this movement of seeing each other, this movement of living fully alive from the heart Jesus gave us, and we speak it out, and we declare it and decree it. Lord, and for the final, and my friends on this call right now, anything that did not make sense, just let it let it like go away. Anything that maybe is just overwhelming, just bring quiet now, just bring shalom. And Lord, bring joy to us, Lord, and our families right now that may be struggling on the call, and children that are not coming to church, and parents, and, and heartbreaks, Lord, let these tools and resources be a blessing for them to equip them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And Lord, bless you. Happy New Year. I'm still saying Happy New Year, even though it's February 1st. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Great Thanks, job. Guys. I'm so glad to partner with Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good stuff. Thanks much. There he is. Bye, John. <laughs>